Well, it's clear from what you're both saying that uh, boxing has a, a number of key issues it really needs to address. Now, Mike, we heard Lou Dubella's v- uh, views on the Pacquiao fight before 9.30, but he's also deeply concerned about the way the sport's heading. Yes, I've been talking to him principally about this Super 6 tournament. He was the promoter of Jermaine Taylor, who was the first of the fighters to pull out at the start of this year. Just a few weeks ago, Mikel Kessler withdrew as well because of an eye injury, so that left really four, possibly five fighters still left in. But we got to talk generally about boxing in the US and and the state of the sport over there and he's really concerned for its health. Boxing's a failure right now in the United States. The sport is not on the rise, the sport is on the decline. So anything that shows some creativity in my mind and garners any attention, the very fact we're on this phone call, uh, to me is a positive. So, you know, I, I, I am pro Super 6. You know, you have to expect injuries, you have to expect things to happen when you have six fighters in an extended period of time. But that being said, I think the format was somewhat justified by the fact that, that, that look at the guys that lost in round one that came back in round two and one. You know, Kessler was pretty much humiliated in his, uh, in his first fight and then came back and beat Carl. You know, when you look at the points totals, this was a wide open tournament. The format worked. The level of competition was certainly top, top notch and, and the guys that had the greatest class in the division going in. And, um, you know, I, I think you have to expect the bumps that were in the road. But mm-hmm. right now, frankly, when you have often networks looking for undefeated records and, and quality fights being, uh, frankly, in my mind, far, far too infrequent, you know, when you have promoters putting their own guys in with their own guys without any regard to the best fighting the best, when you don't have any overseeing body anywhere in the world that cares about the long-term interests of the sport, in my mind, anything that garners press attention, anything that that makes sense, frankly, you know, even if it's going to have its its failings, anything that makes sense in terms of of shining some attention on boxing is positive. And you've been involved for an awful long time, Lou. So these are sweeping too, statements. Too, too I mean, many you... years, frankly. Too many. Twenty-one years now. And is it worse than it's ever been in your time? The industry is worse than it's ever been on a worldwide basis. I mean, there are certain countries. I mean, first of all, I mean, I, there is more of an interest in in boxing right now in Great Britain. It's less of a niche sport than it is in the United States. But even that, the television picture in Great Britain is the worst I've seen since I've been in boxing. I get a lot of criticism for saying what I believe is true, but the truth of the matter is if people don't start admitting where we stand as an industry and as a business worldwide, then we are going to continue to become more and more of a niche. And and the sport of kings will, will have collapsed to a point beyond saving in terms of being a major force. I believe there will always be boxing, but if we continue to decline the way we are, as an industry, we're in real trouble. Are you tempted to walk away from the sport, Lou? I'm tempted. I mean, I've been been tempted every year. I I can go back a decade. Um, The problem I'm seeing right now is, you know, I I, I got into this as a young man. I've spent 21 years in it. I'm basically in middle age right now, and I have to make a decision. Do I want to spend the rest of my life doing this? And I have to be quite honest. If the decline continues, uh, I'm going to have a very hard time rationalizing spending the, 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 the middle top part of my life continuing to, uh, to work full-time or nearly full-time in a sport that's on the decline. Well, he's painting quite a bleak picture there, isn't he, Lou DiBella? Um, do we agree? How, how worried should we be about the future of boxing? Well, I think over here, despite what people are saying about the television picture, and yes, it is grave at the moment, I think the sport beneath that is is thriving. There's a lot of professionals, a lot of successful fighters at at the top end. You've got this potential fight between Hay and Harrison. Carl Froch might be regaining his world title in a few weeks' time. He's certainly going to fight for it. Amir Khan is a world champion at the moment. There's a series of European champions in this country at the moment. In Germany, it's still strong. Terrific television figures over there. So really, I think what Lou is talking about is, is, is the United States, and I know that's not parochial and that can have a big effect on boxing worldwide, but I think the picture there is bleaker than it is elsewhere. And one of the the worries I do have about boxing in the States is that two of the big players, the biggest players for the last 40, 50 years, Don King and Bob Arum, Mm. both turn 80 next year. Mm. And they are masters at developing 
fighters. And mm. if you look at the, the newest kids on the block in terms of promotion, Oscar de la Hoya's Golden Boy promotions, you know, if you look at what they've done with the likes of their prospects, Victor Ortiz, Daniel Jacobs, just a few weeks ago, they're being beaten. And that suggests that they don't have the expertise mm. within the company to build fighters like the Don Kings, like the Bob Arum. So yeah. that that's for, for me, is is the big fear. And like Frank Warren, listen, uh, Oscar de la Hoya and his company Golden Boy, and it's a, re re a refreshing company in many ways, um, but it, the, the two unbeaten prospects it's managed to bring through, it's managed to get the two of them absolutely destroyed, beaten, and they've, they've fallen right back. It's trading at the moment, it's trading some very old fighters, guys who are 40, or in the case of a guy called Bernard Hopkins, who's one of the partners, who's 45 and still taking part in big fights. What alarmed me there, not so much lose words, because none of that was a revelation, but what alarmed me there was lose tone. Yeah. That, and I'm not, I've yeah. known Lou about 15, 16 years, and that was a man absolutely flat. And what we do have in this country is we do have a very good business here. We're having more shows year on, year out. I mean, this is just about as good as it gets. We've got high numbers. We've got lots of fighters. But what, we, what, we, what we're missing here is a little bit of joined-up writing. And I think that Sky, who are about to become even more dominant than they've been for a very long time because ITV are gone and the BBC, are hopefully we'll be doing some, some, some live amateur stuff coming up soon. We'll talk about that hopefully on the next show. But Sky, Sky are going to reintroduce their weekly uh, magazine show, which is always good. All sports need a magazine show, you know, preferably only us on radio. Well, there's five live boxing. Uh, what, what more do you need? Absolutely, and you need that. But they've also gone back to Saturday night, and this is a massive jump. And this has given us back boxing, giving the fans back, and the normal sports fans, the occasional sports fans, back the boxing when it should be on. We've had five or six or seven years on a Friday night, and it's really hurt the business. I think, I think we're not... I don't think we're doing well. I think we're flying, and I think we've got two or three years and the Olympics, and we'll do well there, Mike. There's some brilliant talent coming through. I think we've got a good four or five years here. America, they're struggling. Their amateur system may as well throw the whole thing out. That's another reason, Steve. I think that, that there's cause for real fear about mm. boxing in the States. I was mentioning Don King and Bob Aaron there, but whatever promoters come through, I wonder what they've got to work with. Yeah. If you look at the results, and the performances generally in Beijing in 2008 at the last Olympics showed up the American amateur system to be yeah. in, in dire straits at the moment. And that's the worry, because five or six years ago, the, the pay-per-view figures in the States at the moment are still strong yeah. with Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. Mm. But that can kind of mislead you into thinking that the, mm. that the whole scene is strong. Because if you look back, okay, five or six years ago, I don't think many people would have said that Pacquiao or Mayweather would have become the pay-per-view stars that, that they, they have become. Mm. But at least they were there in the system at the time. At but, the moment, there just aren't those good Americans coming through. But, but Mike, are those two so big? Not off, Certainly not off the back of beating Rickett. Are those two so big as pay-per-view because there, there isn't any alternative? You're not looking at three potential or four potential fighters. You're looking at those two. It's been three years now with those two being in basically I hate to use the expression but in a class stroke league of their own but I also think I mean they are exceptional Steve uh, of course they are in, you know, in any decade appreciate yeah, that. that people just wouldn't buy it if they didn't there's a case where I mean certainly I, I would buy Mayweather in just about any fight just to see the man in action yeah. and likewise Pacquiao so, and, and, and that's why the fight against Margarito will sell and, and even more amazingly the fight against Clotty Sol what about the question of the, of the super sixes I mean oh. you know the format is it is it too long is it you know it's, is it too tough mm, well Thankfully now we're going to get hopefully a truncated version at the end. Uh, it is tough. Is it too tough? Well, these guys are professional boxers and they're being handsomely rewarded. Um, has it struggled to take a grip? It absolutely has. I know I work for a few papers. I, I, I struggle to get a line in about the Super 6. Now... I would have thought 10 years ago, let's say 15 years ago, when I was at the Daily Telegraph flying all around the world, Mr. Billy Jet Set, uh, let me tell you then, I would have got the Super 6 in on a weekly basis, something because there was always something happening. And we've been rewarded with the Super 6, in my opinion, in the last 18 months, with some fantastic fights and some even bigger nights. Even when fights were bad, like Froch Derail, which was a stinker at 3 o'clock in the morning, what an event it was. I mean, that was one of the best broadcasts we've done on 5 Live, Mike, and the fight was a stinkeroo, let's tell the truth. It was, but in... in uh... Uh, a tournament of that many fights not every one of them is going to be, be an great. up and downer and a humdinger so mm. you, generally the the quality of the tournament Brilliant. has been outstanding and maybe too good for its own good yeah. and, and we mentioned Carl Froch now as you mentioned earlier on Mikel Kessler has dropped out of the Super Sixes but that could be a, a great benefit mm. to Carl Froch because he gets to fight for, for the WBC Super Middleweight title yeah he's been assured it's going to be a title fight on October the 2nd in Monaco against Arthur Abraham so he has a chance to regain the belt that he lost against Mikel 
Kessler. If he wins that, he then goes through to the final against the winner of the fight between Andre Ward and Andre Durrell, who he's already beaten. And then you'll have a fight for not only the Super Six, but the undisputed well, it wouldn't be undisputed, actually, because of Lucien Bouté, another champion. But you'd have a, a, a unification fight for the WBC and the WBA titles. Then the winner of that, this is where I, I think it gets, it gets really, I think, fascinating, because then you've got life beyond the Super Six. The winner of the Super Six can then maybe be looking at, at facing Kessler, and you've got the question, well, what would Kessler have done if he was still in the tournament? And then you've got the winner of that going on to face Lucien Bouté, the Canadian who wasn't in it in the first place and is regarded by some as, as, as very close to being the number one anyway. So there are still fascinating permutations out there at some point. Oh, Mike, anyway. I'll throw at you what our American cousins call the old curveball. What about the Jean Pascal, who Froch beat to win the WBC title, who subsequently went on to win the light heavyweight title, who just beat the American golden boy Chad Dawson, who's just about to fight 45-year-old Bernard Hopkins. What about the winner of Bernard Hopkins against Jean Pascal, which will sell out in a nanosecond in Montreal because Hopkins will sell it comfortably? What about the winner of that fight in the winner of the Super? Super Six. Now these are big fights, Eddie. These are big fights. The problem is, and I and I hate to say this, apart from you know our loyal followers on here and the guys that read, you know, use the forums and really struggle through the, the boxing news and boxing monthly, we may be may as well be talking double Dutch. We're, you know, I'm convincing you. If you're driving in your car, if you haven't seen one of Frotty's fights in the Super Six, you've missed out, brother. Trust me, you have, or sister. And and in the USA, I mean, is it is it. You know, has it hit the mark in the USA Super Six? Well, Showtime TV, whose idea and concept it was in the first place, are very happy with it. They're paying the vi fighters very handsomely, and so they must be getting their return. Now, what they'll say at the end of it, I don't know. But here we are talking quite agitatedly about this. And, and you know, just a few moments ago, we were also talking about maybe the sport being in decline. Yeah. And I, I do mm. think we have to separate the US from elsewhere, because they have a serious threat from UFC and mixed martial mm. arts in general but also from, from the point of view of bringing prospects through. And that's not the problem here. It's not the problem in Germany. And increasingly, it's not the problem in Canada. And if I could just say, to maybe put a full stop under this, okay, we, we, we sort of looked through rose-tinted glasses at some of the great fights in history, Mike. And I was with um, Tommy Hearns and Roberta Duran last night at a dinner show, a talking show, up in Wolverhampton, which was very much fun. And I, so I had a good look at their records. These guys, you know, doing all these great fights that they had, Leonard against Hagler and Hagler against Hearns and Duran against Leonard, they kept on having 19 month breaks, 22 month breaks, and fighting, and I'm going to say it, bums, they didn't have four or five, none of them ever had four or five fights in a 22 month period against proper fighters, this is what all of the Super 6 guys have done, so what we're seeing here is not just a return to the old days, we're seeing, we're seeing the old days and some, this is good stuff, this is quality and they're good fighters, and it's, and I, and it's just a pity that it's not caught on like it has in the studio. As always, guys, we've got so much.